day two of CDIOIQ. Um, it's hard to believe that it's been 24 hours since uh, Kayvon Rokish um, really shared with us his concepts around the future of data and the evolution. Um, and I think, uh, I think all of us have had an opportunity to sit in on a lot of sessions and uh, most importantly have a chance to interact with peers um, to really understand what they're facing and uh, equally the kinds of approaches that they're using in deploying their data strategies. And so I'd like to welcome you to uh, Wednesday, the second day of the event. Um, and uh, just a couple of reminders. Uh, for those of you who are driving into the event, make sure that you get the $15 parking pass. Um, so that's uh, um, a discounted rate on the normal rate for the Hyatt. So make sure that you do that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would encourage you to uh, visit the different sessions as well as, as you, you know, again, just as a reminder, um, we've, we've done this a few times now, but just as a reminder uh, for the uh, breaks and for the lunch session that is in the area where the sponsors are. And so make sure that you take an opportunity to visit some of the sponsors. Um, because as uh, Dr. Wang explained yesterday, sponsors are a big part of the event and, and, and really helping bring all of this together. So uh, certainly do that. And I also think uh, if we think about um, what Dr. Wang said yesterday, um, and I, I really enjoy the, uh, the JFK quote that he uses, which is, you know, we do this not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And I think those of us who are in this space recognize that really executing a data strategy within an organization and certainly the role of the CDO within an organization can be a very difficult uh, role. So it's, uh, but we don't do it because it's easy, we do it because it's hard. And just like Kayvon mentioned, it gives us an ability to deliver extreme value to the organization and data really has to be done right within the organization. So with that, let me, uh, um, let us transition into all of the different sessions. Uh, for those of, the, of you that are attending at the Hyatt, um, the breakout rooms are, there's six breakout rooms, one for each of the active sessions. Uh, for those who are joining remotely, um, you will be, this session will continue into session 9A um, so if you're joining one of the other sessions, you'll need to disconnect from this stream and connect to one of the other streams. So with that, let me, uh, again, welcome you to day two and turn it over to uh, the session 9A. Thank you.
Me here. Good. So you're going to start? No. <coughs> Please, I know you start. You're okay. the star. <laughs> uh, I, I'm Dave Levine. I'm the uh, Global VP of Digital Transformation for New Era Technologies, and I'm the um, track producer for the track today. So I just want to introduce uh, these guys. I'll let them introduce themselves as they come up to speak. But you're on uh, session 9E, all about building CDO uh, IQ. IQ communities around yes, the world, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're here in the right place, then welcome, and we'll give it over to Dr. Wang. Uh, I'll give it over to Christine, oh. <laughs> who's the moderator. OK, so uh, the purpose of this session is actually to discuss, and I hope it's real discussion with panelists here, but also with the audience. Uh, and I see a good representation of different uh, continents, at least uh, uh, non-European ones and uh, non-American ones. Also here, um, South American, Europe. Um, and um, the idea is to uh, discuss how we have done the first steps towards strengthening uh, the global CDO IQ uh, communities and also organizing an impressive set of successful events. Yes, um, and also report experiences in Europe, mm -hmm. in Singapore, and in in, uh, in South in America. Exactly, and uh, uh, you may have seen that there's a slight uh, change uh, compared to the original announcement of the session because we have to excuse Ram Kumar who was supposed to be here but had to cancel for family emergency. So uh, it is a pity, but I think we can perhaps uh, catch up for him. I, I represent Singapore. <laughs> exactly, so we have a Singapore representative here too. So um, we're going to start with um, a quick intro or with some introduction. They need to switch the slides in the back. Thanks. <laughs> okay, but um, the the yeah. so now we are uh, having the introduction first from Richard, and then we have the uh, different like a little bit of an overview what happened okay. in the different regions. Okay. So floor so, is yours. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, you probably saw my opening speech uh, yesterday. Uh, I started the CDO uh, symposium in two thousand eight, and before that was a uh, information quality conference, and I chose to combine them together. It was a very wise move because these days there are many CDO forum, conference, etc. So CDO IQ is different. I'm good. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I've been doing this for many years, and uh, one of the things I started crazily uh, to do is say, uh, well, why, why not expand from MIT to other places? And just I was thinking, CJ and Christine approach me say, you know, it's time again, let's go to Europe. I said, okay, uh, you, you mentioned it, you've been charged. So the next year, we have CDO IQ in, uh, uh, in, 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 in Switzerland for Europe, and then we have uh, South uh, Brazil. I've been working with Fabio and uh, Mario for a long time, so we have easily get the uh, uh, CDO IQ at 10, and then we talk to Sammy. Sammy is volunteering for, for, uh, for uh, Finland. Uh, for Nord so I explain from Finland to Nordic. He should, should sit up here to talk. <laughs> and so pretty soon we have different places. And Christine and some people ask me, what's the, what's the master plan? And I say, I don't have a master plan because I don't know where the road is going to be. And uh, typically my answer is that the first casualty of war is, is, is a plane. Okay. And now we have. Uh, uh, CDIQ Nordic, and there's a China, uh, China community here. They want to have a CDIQ China. Okay, and I said, "Well, if it's safe, we're going to go there." So that's me and uh, uh, a long discussion, but not about me, but I think yeah. not important. So I think <laughs> uh, we have seen the different nice uh, posters <coughs> also for the different locations um, that actually um, uh, represent what Richard just said. There's also South Africa, actually. Yes, South Africa. Uh, uh, one day, uh, Dr. Deja so Solomon approached me and said, I got this a dean from South Africa coming here, you got to see her. So mm -hmm. I took her to an Italian restaurant for, for a meal, and at the end she said, I'm convinced I'm going to have a CDO IQ South Africa. So we You'll have, have to give us the name of that restaurant, Rich. It sounds like <laughs> <a pretty laughs> Yeah, yes. 
Okay. Like no name. Yeah. So, but um, this is what you also see in the lobby uh, if you're here on site. Um, so, uh, the CDO IQ program, I think that you do still okay. want to I comment on it. it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I talked about this already yesterday, but basically, uh, we, we didn't start this. Uh, uh, recently, we started in 1988 when I was a young assistant professor at MIT Sloan School of Management. I conceived the idea of put data to TQM, so we started a da total data quality management program. In the 1990s, uh, data quality becomes an important issue in Christian was there, uh, Peter was there, so, so we did the data quality in the 1990s, which started many companies. They all got rich, uh, bought out by IBM, Oracle, and uh, Informatica. And, uh, as, as we go move on, uh, I, I went to Pentagon from 2009 to 2011, and there <coughs> I found out you really need to have a voice of uh, data in a C-suite. So I conceived the idea of starting an MIT Army CDO forum. And don't get me wrong, there are lots of uh, conferences talking about CDOs, but when you put MIT and Army together, it catches attention. So mm. among the participants were a small group of somewhere around 30 to 40 people, but there were three individuals representing Gartner Group, IBM, and SAP. Each of them went back, started their business on CDO. So I didn't, I didn't start it. A, it's a community effort. They put all, believe it's a good idea, they started. And similarly now, we come into here, we say, well, it's here, and we look for people. Uh, if you think it's interesting, we're happy to have it in your, in your region or in your country. And Christine and I were debating whether we should have each region or each country. I say, let the market decide. So that's about the pro program. Exactly, and we have these statements a little bit from different regions. And I think that I'm the first one. You see here the Swiss flag. Um, um, actually, what we try to do is not only Switzerland, but um, at least have a European symposium. And I think that's also uh, part of the um, of the discussions that we had when we were setting up. So first of all, as mentioned, I think the idea of having a symposium in Europe was born in 2017 when I met CJ Nakamura, who is now a chief data officer at SAIS uh, here in Boston. And uh, we said, okay, it would be actually a right timing to promote the chief data officer role also in Europe. And we strongly believe also in the uh, collaboration between academia and uh, industry to drive some of the ideas because you have higher credibility, as you also mentioned. Yeah. So you can put different stakeholders together. And that was uh, the format that we also uh, have chosen for the Lausanne event, even though it is a little bit different than uh, or differs. And I think each region differs a little bit. So we had the inaugural um, symposium last year. Uh, it is a one-day event uh, because we wanted really to make sure that CDOs who have a pretty busy schedule have the time to come and really attend the entire uh, session. So starting from, I don't know, 8 o'clock uh, to um, the evening, uh, closing with a dinner. And um, we were co-hosted by two universities on, uh, in Lausanne. So we have the Polytechnical University, uh, EPFL, and I'm at the University of Lausanne, which has the business school uh, HEC Lausanne. So it was a little bit like the combination of business and also more technical um, people from university side. And as you may see, you have sponsors also um, that you find here. So uh, PwC and SAP um, supported us as main sponsors, but also a large number of uh, and we looked for a mix of innovative players from the European market, but also more established ones, also some coming here over from uh, from US. And uh, I just have a couple of, of uh, photos to give you an impression. So we were in a um, typical university setting, so auditoriums um, with uh, um, yeah, large auditoriums <laughs> also. Uh, we had something like 160 uh, participants from more than 100 organizations. Uh, more than 10 countries, so Europe obviously is difficult to represent with all the many countries. And there was obviously uh, the main representation from Switzerland, Germany, France. But I think it makes sense, uh, and that's very clear for us, really, it's Central Europe. Europe um, is important because there are many local country-specific events, but bringing the community together um, from different industries, from different countries, um, helps. and. Uh, we had some key topics um, that I would like to mention because that's also one of the discussions that we had. So 
and we got a lot of interest actually on exchanging. Uh, so what are topics in Singapore or Europe or in, in the US? So in our um, event, we, it was a lot about data analytics journeys, about the transformation, similar to what we see here, and especially innovating and also scaling um, to a large degree. But what is specific about um, Europe is we had one track on um, the data economy and especially data ecosystems, data sharing, data platforms. Uh, which is very much promoted by the European Union. Switzerland is not in the European Union, I have to admit, but um, at least, I mean, every European uh, company has somehow to uh, foster ecosystem. So it's heavily, um, yeah, integrated economy and initiatives to promote data sharing and data spaces are important and we wanted to give these innovative topics also a space uh, to be there. It was an invitation-only event, uh, so we uh, actually did a little bit of a shift because we wanted to have really good um, company representations, chief data officers. Um, and you see here some of the uh, LinkedIn posts that actually summarized very nicely uh, the event. So from chief data officers from different companies, you see Eloy Sasso, for instance, from Richemont, luxury company, or Michelin uh, Casey, who is also has a US background but works for Siemens. Uh, so it was really amazing how much um, yeah, uh, feedback we got also through these social media channels for only a one-day event. So I just wanted to share that as um, a couple of highlights. So uh, we are planning or we are now um, actually in the um, preparation for the next uh, edition. So it's on 14th of September um, on our campus again. And uh, it's invitation only. and. Um, but you can request invitations. So typically, we admit chief data officers, chief analytics officers, data leaders. We just want to make sure, because we do ha have limited space here, uh, that we, um, um, yeah, that we capture and uh, um, attention and have a critical mass of chief data officers actually attending, because that's important to build the community, and afterwards we can actually scale. I think so. That's a little bit like from the European side. Then we have Singapore, so yeah, which I'll, now... I'll talk about Singapore. I, can I stand up? Yeah. Right. It's easy. Can you stand for global? <coughs> right. uh, I, I think I have this. So, um, so in Singapore, uh, we approached uh, uh, National Nanyang Technology University, and the dean uh, said, yeah, absolutely. And then the vice dean said, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in charge. So that gets started. It's a very different style in Singapore as opposed to in Europe. And in Europe, we are, have a uh, by invitation only, no, no uh, uh, live stream to the world. In Singapore, they, they insist they have to go uh, live stream to the community. And not only that, in Europe, we don't have government representation because it's too headachey to deal with EU. <laughs> we have too many governments. Over. Whereas in Singapore, uh, they emphasize the government involvement. So the point I'm trying to emphasize is that in some region, uh, they have different, uh, different regions have their, their different specific needs and we cater, in, cater to the specific needs and that's, after all that we have, the, we have the regional symposium other than the time difference between here and, and Switzerland and, and, and Singapore. So, so that's, uh, and, uh, it was amazing, uh, very well done and we got a lot of government support including the CDO from the Supreme Court who became uh, uh, the CDO for the the privacy uh, area. And in Singapore, their privacy is much more advancing than in the US. I was very impressed. So it's in Europe. There are certain areas that in Europe is much better, more advancing than in, in, in the US. So next, next slide. OK. So, uh, so, uh, so it's, uh, it's done in, at a symposium. Uh, they, I asked them, which, uh, you know, like I, I joke all the time, I'm very, very formal. I always say, no, when you're pregnant, you say, no more babies anymore. But three months after that, well, have another one. <laughs> and so I asked the host, would you like to do it next year? She said, oh, yeah, absolutely. So that's how I do it is when we finish one, one symposium, we ask for next year. I'm starting to plan for next year as well. And for Singapore, the plan is ongoing with, between my team uh, and the Singapore team. Where they have the first meeting uh, right after this symposium. So, so it's going to be. Uh, si similar to here, we have sponsors. We need sponsors to, to, give, to be self-sufficient. Uh, 
and when speakers and speakers as like in Europe, in Europe speakers, I leave it to Christine to decide. You know, whenever someone wants to speak, I say talk to Christine. Okay, and in Singapore, I talk to ask him to talk to wife on the Professor Bohr, and the panels and the different kind of panel. It all depends on the local needs, and again they they do it. Attendees are important. So for in Europe, uh, they, she picks who to come to the party. In Singapore, we invited a lot of people. We got 20% of people didn't show up. And uh, 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 still, the people who show up is pre, pre, uh, pretty important people. So, so that makes a difference. Sim similar here, we have a summit on Monday. We have about 20% of our name base are still there. And that's the nature of business. So, uh, so anyway. Uh, and so the summit in, in Singapore is for APEC, but then we started to get uh, people from Australia interested in coming, so we may have a CDO IQ Australia. My team is all excited because they get to go to Australia for free, so the team is <laughs> happy of that. Uh, so next slide, please. And so, so for, okay. <clears throat> okay. Let me stand here. Okay, hello. Thank you for coming for this session. Uh, uh, <coughs> before talking about CDO IQ Latam, uh, I must tell you a, a little bit of our history. Uh, in the early 2010, we created the Kibras Information Quality Brazil, uh, uh, with support of Dr. Wang uh, and the, the MTIQ program. And then uh, we now uh, changed to the CDO, CDO IQ program. The first uh, CDO IQ uh, LATAM Symposium uh, took place uh, in Sao Paulo in, on March uh, the 14th uh, uh, in a FIAP. FIAP is a top technology uh, school in Sao Paulo. Uh, we had a one-day symposium with 37 uh, sessions, two keynote speakers and 34 track speakers in, uh, distributed in three tracks. Uh, and we had uh, 538 attendees being 247 on-site and 292 <coughs> online. Uh, we had uh, 172 organizations represented, uh, being companies, academy, government and associations. And uh, the attendees came from 11 countries, mostly from Brazil, but also from other countries in Latin America. And uh, we had 260 uh, data leaders, uh, among them 50 have the formal uh, job title of CGO and data and analytics directors. We had a uh, simultaneous translation uh, between Portuguese, Spanish and English for uh, almost uh, all the sessions, not all but almost all. Can we go on? Okay, keynote speakers were Dr. Wang, who honored us with his presence and great support, and also the Secretary of Digital Government of the Ministry of Management and Innovation of the Brazilian Federal Government. Uh, the on-site uh, uh, audience was very active in networking, talking to the sponsors, what made the sponsors very happy. Uh, and also the online uh, audience was very much engaged. They spent in average five hours of the day connected to the platform. It's a, a, a very good rate. And I want to point out that uh, at the, the, in the, even if my daughter also went with me, said that, you know that guy who talked in the morning? He was on the TV with the president of Brazil. Ah, okay. And, and so in Singapore, the the people came and asked whether they come from the prime minister's office and from Supreme Court. So we have huge impact top down because the nature of the, the, the symposium that we run. So thank you, Fabio and Mario. And, you. and you're going to do it again, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we are going, the, well, next year, we all have also uh, the second edition. Uh, and we, we had in the first uh, edition also the CDO certificate program and the two subsequent days after the symposium uh, that uh, we will make it again uh, next year just after the symposium day. Okay. Yes. Maybe go ahead. Well, uh, the post-symposium survey gives us a, a very good, uh, a very high confidence in the success and the growth of the next uh, uh, edition, 92% uh, uh, of the attendees <coughs> would recommend the symposium, 73% rated the content as excellent. So the expectations were exceeded for 58% of the attendees and met for 42. 
And we have some statements for the next edition, almost everybody intends to participate the, uh, among the responders. And uh, we have some statements here uh, in the, the survey. And the topics of interest, uh, uh, the first one far uh, is data journey to generate business value. That's the main concern of the, the audience. Okay. Uh, and uh, also data strategy in digital transformation. Okay, so that's what uh, we, we made there and uh, the plan for the next edition. Mm. And we are yeah. talking to, to people here, the sponsors. We have, mo most of the sponsors here have a local regional operation uh, in South America, so maybe they can support us there. Okay. And so make, let me make a point that uh, um, people typically ask me what's the roadmap, what's the detailed plan if I want to run a symposium in my region and my answer is I don't have one, let's do one the first year to try it out and when it becomes successful then the second year you can make it more more, uh, more formal and so, so it's shaping up for Europe, for, uh, for Brazil and for Singapore, they're all going into two second years and uh, I think Christine is trying to convince me for third year, I think I'm inclined to have to do the third year <laughs> as well. And, and the reason for a very important reason, which is it takes the first year to figure out where's the, where's the layout, who are the sentiment, what are the topics important to region. The second year, it really goes strong to get the support and establish data CDO community in your region. Like right now, Europe uh, CDO community is shaping up very nicely. And for, you know, going forward, you know, if, as I said, you know, uh, when you do it, when you redo it, you say, do I want to do it again next year, including myself? Do I want to do it next year? It's a really tremendous amount of effort, but that's where we are. And I have Peter Aiken talk about Cedio Global. He, he has been traveling all over the world, so just say what you want to say. Do you see a pattern here? <laughs> yes? No? Lisa? See a pattern? Okay, so the pattern is this. We need leadership to go forward and be caring about data. Now, I'm very fortunate in that my career has allowed me to work with more than 200 different companies in this area. And the process we do inside a company is exactly the same process that you're seeing occur here. There's a leader who goes in and says, this stuff is important. Whenever I walk into a room full of new people, Dave, you probably see this in your own business as well, there's always a couple people in the back who are kind of going, I've been waiting for this to happen for a while. I'm so glad you guys are here. And that's what we're doing is we're attracting people out of the woodwork because as everybody has said, this is hard work. It is not easy to do this. But we find those other data leaders that are in the organization or maybe even better, the pre-data leaders, the people who are not quite data leaders but think they might want to become data leaders. So I just came back from a week in China, which was my first trip there and just a mind-opening experience as, as far as that goes. President Xi has said data is important to the Chinese citizens. Chinese citizens currently have more data protection rights than Americans do. Really? Kind of interesting little measurable pieces. In addition to that, the air quality in Beijing was a lot better than the air quality in Washington, D.C. Every day that I was there, we're going to Canadian wildfire, so there's at least an excuse for it. <laughs> but, you know, nevertheless, it was still a, a, an experience. Um, I'm also president of DEMA, and that's the data profession organization. Uh, we have a, a, a group in China that is working right now. We are planning to have 17 chapters by the end of the year mm -hmm. that are running. There is so much demand there at this point. And the real key for that, at least in China, is that YouTube, LinkedIn, and Google are blocked. So nothing, unless it's broadcast from China into China, gets through. And so they're starving over there for this, but they also understand when the president of the country says, hello, this is important, people pay attention to this. So we're looking for the, if you will, the willing. Uh, Sammy, you're the president of DEMA um, in Finland, right? Vice president. Vice president, okay. You we're president. Thank you for your continued service, right? <laughs> we started that chapter back in the 90s, I think. Uh, and it's one of those things that you think a small country like Finland you know, what do they have? Well, they've got a tremendous amount of really innovative things that are happening in that country uh, that are there. And this is the wonderful part. We get to learn from the process of everybody coming along and showing us the different practices, whether they're in LATAM, whether they're in Singapore, whether they're in uh, India. 
it's wonderful to be able to pull that out, but you need some way of sustaining it. And this is, I think, what Rich is trying to do and Christine is trying to do and Mario is trying to do, is to say, how do we sustain this? Well, regular meetings, just for starters. Now, this is gonna sound a little bit like AA. <laughs> people understand this though, right? <laughs> When people go to a new town and they're looking for the AA meeting in town, there's always one there. Mm. And I think, I'm not sure we want to be aligned with it along those <laughs> lines, but we want people when they land in a new job to be able to find out. Or somebody becomes a new data leader and say, hey, what are the other data people in your organization? Mm. Well, this is happening now on a worldwide scale. And I think mm. that's really the message here. There's no secret sauce. You've got to have somebody that's willing to go out and do this. Mm -hmm. Rich and I are very fortunate that we have academic careers, so mm -hmm. we have some things we need to do for the university, but the university likes us to be out and doing these kinds of things uh, on this. But it really does require sustained effort, and that's why we're so grateful that you all are at least interested in this process, and more importantly, willing to take some of your time and put it into this process so that other people can learn. Now, there were a couple jokes in China. They had a, a couple of things. They said, first of all, if you're in data, you either have gray hair or no hair. <laughs> okay. Hey. Look around though, we are actually starting to attract a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a gap there for about 30 years where people just kind of went, data, that's sort of icky old stuff. But now young people are coming in and saying, data's cool. There's all sorts of things we can do with data. And by the way, it will help humanity too. Let's not forget that general concept around that. The other thing I learned in China though, interestingly enough, is the word Dhamma in China turns out to mean wisdom from a wise old grandmother. So I got the character and I'm trying to figure mm. out how to turn it into a logo now. Mm. But we need these kinds of touch points for people to look at and say, if you ask other people what is DEMA, it used to stand for the Data Administration <coughs> and Management Association. And it was about as interesting as Christine's cough, right? It's just not a very good thing. So we need some better branding and that's what we're looking for as well. If I may, Christine, um, we have Sammy here. Maybe yeah. he can talk a little bit about uh, the CDIQ Nordic since you're on the mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. It's organized. Yeah, so I'm Sami Laine. Uh, I'm now working in, in Alta University Executive Education, and we got the job to try to organize the first ever Nordic CDO IQ Symposium. We have never done this before, so this is completely new and, well, a lot of work. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think uh, what's interesting is that now when we are starting the brand new movement, uh, Finland and Nordic countries are all small, Sweden, uh, 10 million people, uh, others are 5 million people, and Iceland, uh, probably a million people, so, or, or even much less. So, really small pe uh, countries, not many chief data officers actually, and most of CDOs are actually chief digital officers, and they are slightly different role, uh, thinking differently than chief data officers. Uh, but what we have been... Uh, Talking to others, uh, there's a lot of uh, this kind of ICT professional, da data professional conferences, and then there's uh, business conferences that CEOs and uh, other business uh, people are doing, but there's no conferences that are mixing up, mixing up business and data leaders. So actually we are now trying to make a diff different approach uh, we can't compete with many of the commercial conferences, but we try to bring some of the business people, like uh, chief operation officers. They are actually the ones who control the processes, and data is born out of the processes. It shouldn't be an afterthought that you just document things and you just mess and wrangle data afterwards. But the core data is created by business during business processes. So hopefully we get some of these operational uh, uh, chief operational officers, chief medical information officers, chief executive officers who are actually making the decisions, <coughs> and chief data officers uh, together, and then have a couple of discussions on this, how to solve this dilemma, why we are in own silos, why, why it's so hard to be chief data officer and your career is a couple of years and everybody is changing their positions uh, after a few years. So hopefully this, our new uh, idea of trying to combine business more closer to CDO IQ2, it works and maybe it's something that others could then join if it works. 
or if we fail, hopefully others will try it in better success. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, so I think we have uh, a little bit like uh, close the statements uh, from the different regions. And uh, Sami also, thank you for um, giving a preview. Um, so when we were preparing, uh, we were brainstorming around a number of topics. And perhaps we can start with the first one. So it was a little bit like, OK, what are these key themes that are of relevance for the CDO communities uh, before then? Uh, looking also a little bit into how we can grow these communities and how, how we can really help uh, to create um, a, a certain dynamic. Um, and some of you uh, mentioned that also. I mean, if you start for the first time, you don't have necessarily uh, the network or you have some your personal networks. Of, uh, you can activate a number of uh, people, but we have to really find good topics and also good positioning because there are many, many data events and also sponsors and attendees, they have to make their choices. So and we want to get really the top attendees. We have to be very careful about uh, what to select and how to also address the good topics to, to strengthen the role. So for the key themes. Um, OK, uh, Christian has been asking me, what are the key themes for CDO IT? I say, honestly, I don't know. You know, I only know that put a man on the moon. And then Let's go for <coughs> it. But mm -hmm. I have begin beginning to find a theme which is uh, for each community is remain to be the same, which is advanced data leadership in research and practice. And we do it rigorously and uh, 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 pra pragmatically. So we carry credential. So our symposium is not a commercial conference, but an educational conference just like this one. So people actually come here, they actually learn a lot of things. Granted that uh, when in Europe, at the end, we ask the uh, audience, what do they like the most? And it's not getting knowledge, it's social networking. <laughs> and that's an important component as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it begins to say, you know, the, the general theme is to let's try to uh, advance leadership, the, uh, data leadership in your, in your mm -hmm. region and globally. Okay. And there's one thing that's important is we get the as high to the government, like uh, the guy who's talking with President Brazil, I think that's very important. The from Prime Minister of Singapore's office, that's, I think that's very important. Now, in Europe, you have different flavor. You do what you need to do, okay? Because in different regions, they have different kind of things. There's another thing I started to learn is that the Christian actually went to Singapore. So we can have different regions. If you, in your regions, you can come getting invited without having to to, uh, to pay or whatever, and that's begin the, the communication among different groups. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it comes one and learn like a, like a, a mm -hmm. shallow learning machine one at a time. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a general theme, and I, I always believe that the, the best way is to let the marketplace uh, go with the flow, let people decide and come back here. We don't have particular things that we want to do this, because most likely, as I said, if you start a plan, master plan, it, it, it will fail, because nobody believes in you. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, uh, as I uh, told before, uh, 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 the main concern there in our region is uh, to generate value to the business. This is the top uh, uh, priority. And also to support the digital transformation. So uh, I think that's uh, something we need to, to pursue and uh, tell people and uh, discuss uh, how to bring value and quickly because uh, time is uh, much valuable. I think these are, these are the two main topics to be discussed. There. So I can perhaps also comment from the European side. Our first um, key theme was um, uh, data strategies to create business value. So it mirrors very well. And this year is business and uh, sorry, data analytics as key business capabilities. So really making it not only uh, a technical theme, but also very much integrated uh, with business. So I think we are very much um, basically seeing the same pattern. I like the idea of data leadership uh, very much. I have to say because I think it's really about like how do you. Uh, transform and as the tenure of CDOs and we see that in the attendees from last year if I look uh, this year at some of the speakers from last year I have not done the maths but um, there's quite a bit of change also so I think how can we really make or help um, companies to sustain their 
data-driven transformation is also an important topic and uh, we want obviously to educate and also to help the data leaders to be successful and not just there for, I don't know, two years or so. Um, so I, I very much like this idea. Perhaps one comment, so if I look at Singapore and um, also like I have been in Boston, I think in the last years, most of the time when it was on, on site, uh, so I see there are the same topics, but different regional flavors. Uh, so we have seen in Singapore very much privacy topics as well as innovation. So they have a different spin. They were very much like uh, fostering innovation, saying, yes, it, we have to respect privacy, but we will show you how. And there's a strong support from government. So this was really very uh, proactive, very impressive from my perspective. If we take Europe, it's a little bit like uh, we have very important regulations. Um, GDPR has been the first one, but you may have heard about the Data Act, the AI Act in Europe. And these are really like uh, forward looking. So Europe uh, and uh, the European Commission wants to really set standards, but these standards are also very difficult uh, to adhere to. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot to actually um, exchange and also discuss how you address those. Mm -hmm. And I see, so for me personally, I have the impression that we focus too much on regulations and too little on the innovation also. So, but uh, we are going to see how this actually um, turns out. So, and I think these regional topics definitely, they, they make their influence in the mm -hmm. agenda or they make their impact on the agenda. So uh, that's, every, but there's, I think the larger themes are actually, all cross-cutting and we got the um, actually the feedback from our uh, CDO um, planning committee uh, to integrate also this global perspective so to invite um, for instance this year I mean we have Tom Davenport um, and Richard Wang to report on the CDO study we have um, for next year I could imagine for instance having also um, somebody from Singapore for instance talk mm -hmm. a little bit about how you innovate while respecting basically privacy and ethical use of AI. So mm -hmm. that would be um, very interesting. So we can exchange on those. And there's one topic I think uh, for the CDO community that is at least in Europe driving very much um, data and that's sustainability. So sustainability reporting, uh, ESG reporting is becoming mandatory and also the uh, requires in the future auditing also of uh, the data that you actually uh, end up reporting itself uh, and that has a huge impact um, in addition to some of the regulation like plastic taxes and so on so suddenly we see that data topics pop up but in a very short time frame they are the classical data quality topics actually but they are like an accelerator for a lot of the data responsibilities for clarifying and they suddenly show business impact although it's very much driven by regulations compliance in a certain way or um, obligations of the companies but uh, it is very fascinating how fast suddenly companies that have not been able to move fast in the data space for a long time suddenly mm -hmm. have to move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, there was, uh, um, can we take some? <coughs> yes, um, my name is Boris. I work for Fraunhofer and have been around in this community for uh, also a couple of years. And I'm now also um, pretty much concerned what Christine has said in, in Europe with these data ecosystems, data sharing topics. And if I may, I would like to um, come back to the, the first question that's here on the, on the slide. So what are the key themes and uh, I may from my point of view add three things to this. Uh, a couple of things have been mentioned because and first of all I think it's, it's a great idea to let's say create a, a truly global and international community out of, out of this um, initiative and also establish um, international hubs because of three things. First of all and that was mentioned, we see a growing landscape of data regulation in different places in the world. <coughs> uh, China was, was mentioned, they have the, the, I think, the personal information protection law, the data security law, and in other places we have, like Christina mentioned that in Europe, we have the Data Governance Act, Data Act, and so on and forth, and other places, different things. But they are, let's say, not isolated. I mean, many large um, international enterprises need to cope with all of these standards, and they don't want to create silos, let's say, in the regions, but want to see how to approach that with a consistent, let's say, approach. The second thing is that, um, let's say, we will probably not end up being decoupled 
that at least that's my guess. So there is, let's say, value chains that cross these different, let's say, uh, data regimes, if you may. And a, a big thing uh, for me is, um, uh, and that also then brings us to the question, what are, let's say, the themes for the global CDO community? Um, international data sharing, uh, in particular in, in value chains like automotive, for example, you, you have to have um, data sharing, for example, from Europe to China in place, but at the same time need to adhere to different, let's say, legal provisions here and there. And on the other hand, of course, you want to organize, let's say, um, a truly international data sharing value chain, and that requires, let's say, international collaboration. The next thing is also, and that was also uh, addressed, I think, Richard, you mentioned it, that we, as far as I see, um, uh, can observe a, a, a different role of the, of the government, so to say, because many of these data sharing activities and uh, data ecosystem activities are not only driven by, private, by the private sector, but include uh, public authorities, pub the public sector, even governments themselves. So we end up, let's say, in, in let's say, in, in I don't know, hybrid settings of let's say, data ecosystem ownership built by private companies on the one hand side, but the state on the other hand. And I think this is a development that we see in different flavors, but nonetheless see everywhere around the globe. And I think these three things, as I said, data regulation landscape, sharing, and, and in China they refer to it as cross-border data governance. So how can I make sure these things? And there are nice, interesting things happening, like special economic zone for data trading in Shanghai and Shenzhen, for example. And then once more, the, the, these hybrid versions of, let's say, private, public data ecosystem things. And I think all of those require international exchange of knowledge and information and also an exchange of research results here. So I think, therefore, it's the time is right exactly to do that. So I, I appreciate it very much. And uh, I think this is the right way to do it. Right now. Thanks. If I may follow yeah. up. Uh, actually, um, I have some work for you to do, <laughs> as always. Uh, we, we are uh, <coughs> coming up with agenda for next year, and you, if you could send a note, okay, sure. I think Peter can work with you and, and me too. Yeah. We have at least one session in next year's uh, here, because it's a global issue, so probably the best place to, to air this is here, uh, mm -hmm. starting from one session, and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. take the themes into, because we have the, the themes for the last three years, I didn't change it because I don't have enough energy, plus I don't have an idea. But this looks like a very creative and new yeah. area. So yeah. we could create even one track, okay? I probably get David to, uh, to ch track the chair uh, for, for this uh, innovative track, basically is this along the three, three areas. So you say this track would, uh, would get these people. I think you can expand your company. New era should go global, right? So I would be more than happy to contribute to that. That's yeah, a great so idea. Yeah. Okay, so, so, yeah. so that'll yeah. be, that'll be, and it'll be so. here, starting from here. <laughs> and <we can> <laughs> Talk to you, don't, don't open your mouth. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that's where we hear from, right? Yes. I mean, it's just not listening, but we drive it forward together, right? Yes, I mean, yes. Nice. Thank you very much. That's very, that's great. Others? Yes? Yep. Professor from <laughs> Paris. Oh, Hello. Yeah. Um, it's, it's on? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, Shitoni from HEC Paris, France. So um, I would like to comment about the creating value. I mean, for this. So as we know, uh, nowadays people talk about I mean, how data can be used for innovation, AI can be used for, uh, let's say, in innovation, create value. So I'm trying to, so maybe one way is, I mean, we can link, I mean, the CDO with, let's say, digital or digitization or innovation or AI. So I'm thinking if when I talk to people, people may wonder what's the boundary or difference between, let's say, CDO or CIO, Chief Information Officer mm -hmm. or, ch or Chief Digital I mean, Officer or, let's say, Chief uh, Analytical uh, Officer. Okay. So those kind of concept or title are kind of similar, mm, but how we can really, I mean, I think, I mean, we yeah. definitely want to say, okay, C CDO, cover all of those topics and can create value for the business, but how we can really convince people that, I mean, this is all, all in the scope of CDO. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, yeah, if I may comment, um, we did last year um, a little bit of research also on the CDO role um, in, in Europe. 
And um, there is this PWC study also that is actually quite informative about the growing, uh, also increasing number of uh, CDOs, especially in Europe between last year and this year. It's quite amazing. And I think, so the, the key question is, as you mentioned, where is the boundary? And in uh, Europe, at least, um, if you look, for instance, in Germany, um, and I see that in an increasing number of, um, uh, of, of companies, they are very reluctant in addressing or giving additional chief roles because uh, everybody wants to be a chief in something, and it gets a little bit like diluted or, or problematic. And I think Tom Davenport mentioned that also. So it's really like, OK, we have only chiefs, but I mean, we also have some work to do. So uh, we are very much in line with this de facto role, so head of whatever data analytics. Um, and we, uh, we actually integrated for this year chief data and analytics officers because we think um, we cannot split this role, or we should also embrace basically more the analytics officer side to, to capture innovation. But I think there is still, we also find some chief digital officers, um, but for me the main difference would be really like, do you assume responsibility for data and analytics? Uh, so it's not so much the title, but it's more like uh, the task and the responsibility and how you interpret your role as a chief digital officer. So that would be my, basically, um, advice to do because, um, yeah, we can open, but we should also have a core that is somehow meaningful, and that is around the data resource itself, as uh, also initially mentioned, and also its role in uh, innovating and creating business value. That's at least my perspective. Very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think that uh, we have there in our region uh, lots of different titles. We, we have data analytic, analytics directors, some CDO, some CDAO, but uh, the, the, the important point is that people are being responsible for data and analytics. That's the role that uh, our region sees uh, uh, that generate value. Uh, to uh, put data and analytics in a, a, a top priority within the, the, the companies and the uh, government and associations, uh, 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 regardless of the formal title they have. So uh, I think that uh, data and analytics is getting <coughs> great importance and great priority uh, for the companies. Uh, 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 engaging the community to bring to the symposium, we have also Nelson Shea is an executive member of, of our committee and uh, he made an amazing work of bringing people, uh, top data and analytics leaders and uh, you see that uh, the titles uh, vary a lot. So uh, the main point is uh, to be ahead of data and analytics uh, and to be a leader in the companies and the organizations. But there's some point that I find interesting also in the Nordics uh, conference, which is actually it's a role, but um, a role also that is oftentimes contested or also um, not well understood by board level. So um, I think uh, even though um, we see an increasing number that uh, of companies that or organizations that are really uh, focusing on data as a competitive factor, we still also have a lot of companies where it's really hard to get budget and to convince uh, the board um, to have these uh, responsibilities and really um, consider data. And um, I think for us in the future, it will be even more important to have, I don't know, better link to IT CIOs mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand side and then to the to the business side and really like helping to shape and to argue for this role, how, a role, how it should be positioned, is something that is on your priority list, but yeah. still yeah. is still very, very important for many of the um, people that are basically driving data analytics topics inside the organization. Yeah, I have a, couple, a few comments. One of them is that it, I always believe in the market force. Go with the flow, as the Chinese says. You know, the water flows this way, it goes water, and it eventually it will create a, the whole ocean and, and the world. So uh, it's well understood now in the US and I think globally that uh, they are, they are the offensive side and the defense, defensive side. The defensive side is to make sure your data has high quality. The offensive side is to data analytics to, to contribute value to create, demonstrate value to the company. And along the way, with the today, people call C8 CDAO. I started C, C, Chief 
AI officer. So mm -hmm. that let them go. It and as long as we understood that it's promote the data leadership and to contribute to the bottom line of the companies. I think those are two key things. Whether it's called mm -hmm. chief digital officer or chief data officer, is not so much an issue anymore in in the current uh, mm -hmm. thinking. Should we move to the second question, perhaps? So it's, um, I think for everybody who has organized or will be organizing or is in the process of organizing, you know it's a big um, amount of work to, um, to organize these conferences. And uh, the key is the network. And uh, so the question is a little bit, how do we activate this global network? Also, I mean, we know that uh, people from different regions also are here in Boston and have been here for many years. So uh, I think there are promoters, obviously, in the different countries and regions mm -hmm. that we can build on. But what is our approach to actually activating and also being attractive for a younger, um, let's say, a younger community, I would say, um, at least if I compare to some of these new, um, newly created um, data conferences, mm -hmm. which are very much targeted in the data scientists, the uh, cool, um, young people that work with data. So obviously here we are more in a, let's say, settled um, situation. And But I think it's very important, and we did that, for instance, in Europe by saying, okay, our keynote speaker will be from Zalando, which is the largest online retailer in, in Europe, uh, in the fashion industry uh, more specifically. And uh, so I think we have to also integrate more of these I don't know, more digital native companies and uh, also younger population into our communities. Um, so, um, but generally speaking, I think the big topic is how to actually, uh, um, can we leverage and also strengthen uh, this, this growth and uh, regional outreach, or regional yep. expansion. Yes, we can. So uh, for, for the symposium here, we actually have several years of women in data mm -hmm. and that becoming a kind of a standard workshop in, in the, even in like Deloitte is sponsoring that again to, uh, Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. okay. So we could potentially have a young, young data, young CDO, uh, a CDO of the future session. But mm -hmm. we need someone to be the victim to lead the session. So. Okay. Uh, young, what's the definition? I mean, do you know which age? So the question was, you have to take the microphone. Okay. Yeah, just curious. I mean, what's the definition mm, by being young? I mean, what's the age below and uh, which age? And uh, can I say I'm um, young or old? <laughs> I guess in just Jap look at your face. Yeah. In Japan, it's 70 years old. In China, it's 40. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I'm just, just kidding. Of course, another question. <laughs> Yeah, perhaps one idea that crossed my mind when we talk about, let's say, reaching out or ex expanding the community, I think to reach out to the younger generation is, is definitely important, but there is another community that we should also think of teaming up with, which is the open source community, right? I mean, they are because, let's say, more of, let's say, the data infrastructure, at least in my understanding, um, in the future will come from, let's say, open source developments, and they are also let's say, a different kind of community which has enormous impact on the future way how data will be, let's say, used, managed, and so on and so forth. And there might be uh, ideas to reach out to things like Eclipse, for example, or, or other things in order to, I don't know, onboard these guys to, to our community much more. It's a thought, not sure whether that materializes or whether that makes sense in the end, but I think as mentioned, I mean, there is much of important thing going on in, in this community, and I can say for at least from a German perspective, um, open source and the, the relevance of open source developments for, let's say, for future business models, but in particular also for the way data is treated, is not fully understood in, in German companies, I would say. So, and, and there is a big opportunity, I think, for this group also to, well, to, well, to, 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 to reach out to these communities in order to make sure that um, we can come up with a, let's say, consistent view of things, right? Yeah. As I said, a thought, not too sure whether it makes sense, but just crossed my mind. If I may uh, play the devil's advocate, one of the things that we would like to do is to uh, have this symposium and regional symposium to be a focal point for data leadership. Mm -hmm. And so there are many conferences. I just spoke with the, the owner of CDO magazine. He said, I can help you in any way you want, make a lot of money. I said, well, I love money, you know, money, money, greed, is, greed, greed is good. but." I want to make sure that we target the right 
segment. The people mm. we want to help is a C officer or de facto C officer. Okay. Mm. You don't want to be in a symposium and a lot of questions about data warehousing, ETL, that the senior leadership either they uh, live through that or they don't care. Okay. So mm. that's the other side of the coin. And so come to young people, we may want to be careful in terms of how do we do that. <laughs> Focus on the leadership is the symposium about, mm. but we, you know, it's, we want to have women leaders, so women CDOs, that's great, okay. But if a woman 25 years old, probably not, mm -hmm. we probably don't want them to come to the symposium. Just a uh, uh, play the edible case for that. Um, I don't know, Sabi, do you want to also share a little bit like how you, your thoughts about activating? Yeah, no. <coughs> so, Actually, in Nordic conference, we are now uh, also trying to activate the Nordic uh, associations. So, for example, I'm building collaboration with ICT professionals, Finland, ICT leaders of the F Finland. It's a network and like uh, association of CIOs of the Finland. And then uh, we have selected for the conference program committee, uh, for example, data activist from Dema Norway and uh, uh, other this kind of uh, uh, head and uh, director level data leaders who are very active in, uh, in each country's uh, own internal <coughs> networks. So we are trying to like uh, build network of activists uh, around this meeting and then also build connections to these established uh, associations. There is thousands and thousands of people who are already members of these associations and they have good channels to local magazines uh, that might capture actually tens of thousands of relevant people. So e even if the event itself is more for directors and C-level people, we are building this kind of awareness around the mm -hmm. event and topics. And uh, well, if I could say one more thing about these key themes is also that uh, here and many other places, a lot of themes has been on organizational change and this kind of uh, big picture and uh, uh, how to manage organizational change and, all some and also a lot of technologies. What I find it missing is actually the data itself. Yeah. So uh, where is the talks about data standards, open, uh, open electronic health record standards, where are the domain specific or real reference models about how to manage data? not something that's tool specific, but reference models of like uh, entity resolution. Nobody goes into, the, into the, this kind of data topics. It's just a use case in very vague level. So mm. I would like to get real, real with data. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can follow up on, I have it. So uh, I'm pleased to announce that we will have a session on data standards next year. Peter Benson approached me Last month, he wants to put on agenda for the ISO, whatever, 8,000, 9,000 on data quality and data standards. I said, put it on 2024. So data standards, yes, we heard in Europe, we heard in Singapore, we need to, we need to have data standards. So that would be one session on that. And I, if I may just use the opportunity, how to grow the community. Again, I want to be root, uh, 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 cross, uh, grassroots based. So I don't mind regions, I'm even, uh, told uh, Christine I want to have a CDO IQ in Germany for the country. Okay. As long as there's sufficient support, and I'm thinking about uh, since my team is in Philippines, so I want to have a, a CDO IQ in Philippines. And I want to go to Hawaii, you know? And so if Hawaii has enough momentum, we can do Hawaii, everybody goes to Hawaii yeah. for fun. But so if I may um, add a thing here, I think we have to be careful in not and also, col uh, like, uh, I don't know, grading a structure where we are competing uh, between different audience, like for the same audience, because if we do um, this work, it's quite a substantial, mm -hmm. and then we have to really see how also these communities um, add, and where we have a specific um, added, <coughs> sorry, added value um, compared to some of the conferences that already exist also. So, and I think the nice thing here is really that you are <coughs> on a larger level that you can really, um, let's say, um, 
share experiences, but also knowledge. And we have Dharma, we have also other uh, chapters, for instance, in the countries. So I think there's a reflection that we need to, uh, to make to also set up some structures and uh, some, let's say, sustainable way of actually growing these communities. Yeah. Because for us, it would be a, a big problem if there's um, uh, a CDOIQ in France and uh, Germany at the same time. So then we basically are, uh, have a CDOIQ Switzerland, mm -hmm. so which is also an, a way to go. But I think the real, if you want to re really make an impact, we need to have these regional communities and position them as premium communities compared to what already exists yeah. on the more regional level. We have the mm -hmm. same problem in, in Latin America, yeah. one in Argentina, yeah. one in Mexico, and one yes. in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And so those are the, the opening issues that we have to address. So Zitan, sorry, not, not Paris next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We're out of time. I want to thank you personally, Dr. Wang. I've been a sponsor of this event for eight or nine years. I love thank it. I just bring you. my clients here, and they get smart, mm -hmm. and I don't have to do my job. <laughs> so that's great. And I want to thank Peter for doing my job today and handing the microphone <laughs> around, because I got in really late last night. So yeah. So thank you all for attending, and I hope you have a great conference. Thanks.